Yeah, so neither team knows who's coming up next. Uh, you would, I feel like the best strategy for one versus one is to actually send your strongest players, 1v1 mm -hmm. players, at number three because that is where you're almost guaranteed to try and get your team a point. Yep, taking a look at LAS again. So uh, the excitement is clearly mounting <laughs> right now. These guys are very, very close on the precipice, Look at Helio, you can see him. So much enthusiasm. Yeah. I mean, yes, you could get seed one uh, from Team Ice, but you still have to go up against Team Fire, who have been dominating. It's been a little bit rough for Team Ice this whole tournament around. I mean, especially you look at yesterday, all the assassin mode, they completely swept that one away. They've still been winning quite a lot today. Uh, but when you know when they start turning on each other tomorrow, that'll be that'll be where we'll see some real bloodbaths. But exactly. for now, we still have to decide who's going to come up next. Yep. And the last team from Team Ice, OCE, they they have their fate in their own hands, but they are up against a wall. Yep. So what have we seen today, Pyro? Uh, we saw quite the Urgot. And we saw the Callista. Uh, we've now seen a Jin Zhao and a Jace. I honestly felt like that the Jin Zhao could have done it mm -hmm. if he hadn't made that tiny misplay. But there's still a lot of champions left on the board that we are yet to see. Yeah, it was definitely very risky, but but it really does come down to those slight moments. We haven't really seen too many 1v1s that have been entirely one-sided uh, because of the matchup. So I think there's a lot of champions that a lot of players don't tend to think about that can come up really big. You mentioned the Rengar earlier, and I think that actually is going to be a good one because be. it has been it has been a little bit more popular, uh, just generally speaking, even in like assassin mode. But let's take a look at who's up next. They need a reverse sweep. Well, how about the man in the mid lane? It is Swiffer coming out for OCE. Let's see if he can sweep up the rest of this competition. Well, he's going to have to do it against Levy, the Southeast Asian jungler. And we talked about putting your strongest players in the mid lane, oh, in the middle of the pack. And perhaps this is what both teams are doing. Swiffer, the mid laner, considered to be a, a former assassin. He was pretty confident in his assassin play. We didn't quite see him step up and be a master assassin yesterday, but now it's just a one versus one environment. This is his one chance to prove that he can keep his team and his region's hopes alive. Watch him insta-lock Nasus. Just play the safe game. Now, I think it might even be banned in this situation. On the other hand, Levy uh, has come up very big, too. So I, I'm, I'm thinking this is not going to be an easy match for, for either player. And again, OCE, this is their hopes and dreams. They have to win out now. They have to start here. But if SEA win, they are one step closer to pushing themselves over the competition to move on as the third seed for Team Fire. Yeah, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty much the decider as to who will be moving forward into tomorrow's games and who will be falling out of the competition. So it's extremely important. Latin America South is cheering for in this particular one. Yeah, I, I have a I have a slight inclination that uh, Latin America South might be rooting for one side over the other. Um, but <laughs> they're cheering so, against their own team. So you know, I just right. I just read in the chat. <laughs> Go easy. I'm bad one v one. So all right. So let's break this down. Is that a, is that a little mind games? Or well, do you think he's actually I mean, bad? Levy replies <laughs> with me too. So <laughs> mind games with the counter mind games. The best part is they're stone faced too about it. Yeah, they're both just like, oh, so we both suck. Uh, well, this could be awkward. But <laughs> so maybe we'll just see full ham. Maybe we'll see. No, no that's what I like. Uh, I hope I'm hoping it's the former Vedius. Uh, honestly, like waiting for minions and stuff, it is a smarter way to play out the 1v1. But nobody wants to see that. Everyone wants to see the big kills, the big plays. We almost saw a tower get demolished the other day. Oh, I mean, yeah. That was pretty yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, ca it, it became very close. Um, yeah. Personally, you know my favorite. I'd run Katarina almost every time. Yes, I, I am well aware of your preferences, but we'll find out what these players' preferences are as we get into picks and bans once again. Starting off, the Tom Kench is banned, followed by the Cassiopeia and Lucian. Man, these are going quick. Yeah, a lot of mid lane bans focused towards Swiffer. Uh, Le Levy is saying, nah, 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 nah. We're not having any Cassio, any LeBlanc. Tom Kench being taken off the board too, so. Syndra's still available. Yes. Um, what else is still Rise up? is still Rise. Up. We haven't actually seen very much Rise in the 1v1. Ah, the Kennen well. ban. Now, this is, this is good, too, because Kennen is uh, a little scary in the 1v1s. He certainly is. We did actually see it come out victorious yesterday. Um, Annie, we actually saw a bit of yesterday. Didn't quite work out. Um, I can't exactly No, but it definitely remember. wasn't the kid. It was more It was more of like a mis-execution. Yes, it certainly was. Uh, and there's and the Annie ban. There it is. So, okay. insta-lock it. Really? Oh, you can see on Swiffer's face, he's like, do I want to do this? Not only did I see my opponent insta-lock, but, I mean, if you want to win, maybe you just play it safe. I mean, Caitlyn's about the safest you can get at this point. This is a champion that's typically banned as well. I know, right? But if you're Caitlyn, do you go for the safe farming route? I know that when 
Pulse played Caitlyn in a little 1v1 tournament. He actually went for the kill uh, rather than going for the farm play. Yeah, but Pulse is crazy. You got to. He is that. crazy. On the other yes. hand, is Swiffer crazy enough to do this? I think you can safely kite out, and you force Levy to make bad decisions. It is locked in Caitlyn. I like this for OC. Is it going to be enough for Swiffer to take the win? Well, that's the big question. He has decided to take the uh, the barrier. Sorry for the time being. Barrier in a 1v1 is actually much more useful against an Ignite because it's it's level one value, it's early level values are actually much stronger than the heal. And also the heal gets crippled by the opponent's Ignite. So yep. I like the barrier choice. Uh, you should be able to come out ahead if you go for a level one trade. And I actually think that Caitlyn's level one is very strong, especially if you stay in the brush because of how easy it is to stack up those headshot props. Absolutely, you get it twice as fast. I also think I would like to see, uh, not maxing, but take a very, very early uh, point in traps just because it makes it that much harder for Callista to try and dance around, you shove a couple do, yeah. in the bush, and you, it hurts really bad when you step on one of those, and then you get just smacked in the face. The big problem with taking traps early is that you're going to lose wave clear from. Uh... Oh, actually, are you? Rec oh, see, no, I don't mean I'm level thinking... one. I'm thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. Like levels two, level three. Yeah, so that's fine. That's net. fine. Because you don't I'm need thinking that super early. On. For some reason, I was thinking that you should actually take the E at level one if you're actually going to look for an early trade because you can sit in the brush, stack up that headshot, get an early headshot, then you can use your uh, your your E to create a gap, but then get a second proc of the headshot and just zone your opponent away. And with the range advantage that Caitlyn had, she could abuse that. But we'll have to see what Swiffer does as we jump into our third match of the day. Absolutely. And we focus a lot on Swiffer, but on the other side, for Levy, I think his game plan is going to be a little bit more try to abuse the brush as well. And just don't give an opening for Swiffer to get those auto attacks in because Kalista's wave clear early on is not going to be super heavy too, but we have seen the Ren stack start to get really powerful really early. If he can get an all in, it could be big. I feel like that the GPL All-Star squad definitely talked about the power of Kalista in the one versus one. You can see that it's now been picked twice for the team. Uh, they got themselves a win early on that could have been through farm, but he ended up getting the kill. And it is definitely an effective tool using it to just stack up on the minions and throwing your Q out to land it on the back uh, of your opponent to then get that big proc of damage. Now, it was easier against the Urgot because he was so short range and he always had to be within range of the minions. But Caitlyn has a much bigger advantage that compared to the Urgot, so it's going to be much harder to get the harassment down. Interesting. So he's already done the Piltover Peacemaker. Makes a lot of sense here, but he's just going for the minion farm. Doesn't actually try to nail the harass, and he's not taking advantage of the brush right now. A little surprised. Well, his main goal for the early game is actually just to get the early push. There we to go. try and push his opponents underneath uh, the turret, because this is something big very that we see very often in the one versus one, is just trying to force the minions underneath the turret because of how far it, hard it is to farm. Hold on, though. There's the Ignite, and it's level one. He doesn't have his net available, but Levy is fighting right inside the minion Swiffer, though. Loses the trade here. He's going to stick around. This is dangerous. He still has the barrier. He still has the exhaust. He's baited out that summoner spell. He just has to get that level two now. Once he gets E, he's going to be in a pretty good position, but Levy doing a great job of abusing uh, the level advantage that he had. Yeah, all the OC players on the edge of their seats right now. There's I all mean, on the line for them. GPL looking very tense as well. I mean, yeah. this is a big deal for them. They need to move, make their way into that third seed if they want to move on to tomorrow. So getting themselves as many wins as possible is going to be big. Yeah, big headshot and a peacemaker as well. Levy is down to half health. He only has his exhaust available. Swiffer has both of his summoner spells available to him at level three. Should get the traps. And he has a health relic spawn on top of him. But the CS advantage so far is for Levy. Now, Swiffer, he needs to be using his uh, mana a little bit more aggressively right now because he is just getting shoved underneath his tower. He's going to lose a lot of farm here if he's not too careful. And, I mean, losing that cannon is going to hurt him too. Yeah, that's not good. You do not want that to be happening. 13 to 15 CS. It's still very close, but you can see it makes the big difference, and it nearly did in that Urgot Callista matchup earlier on. Swiffer's going to go in, gets the trap, gets the autos. Still, though, Ren stacking up. Ooh, double headshot coming out from Swiffer. Yeah. This is the sort of trading that you want to be going for. Um, but just look at the farm difference. There's now five minions making their way towards Levy, and Swiffer's actually behind. So by prioritizing the trade, Swiffer is falling behind in terms of the CS differential. So he's going to have to try and make this work for himself as actually he's going to force Levy back using the level advantage that he has. Swift has decided to take two points in his queue. Now, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this. Oh, oh. he doesn't actually interrupt the back. That's going to hurt him. Yeah, that's really rough right now. He took a little too much time. He is going to be able to shove this wave, but he's still, you know, not too far ahead on minion waves, and it's going to be Levy's chance to pretty much kind of keep this push going. You can see both teams sitting in the back just waiting for it. A very, very tense moment here because this could decide our semifinals. So in terms of the gold, that's pretty even. Um, 
In terms of swords as well. Swift actually picked himself up the long sword rather than going for a bit of sustain. Oh, he's going to trade it for boots and sustain ah. now. Mm, I suppose it does make sense because if you do have that slight move speed advantage, it makes it easier to walk in and out of range and just dance around your opponent. Again, Caitlyn, big range advantage over her opponent. Um, but you will be, I suppose in terms of damage, you're actually even with the Callista because you both have the Doran's Blade as well. So shouldn't be too bad for Swiffer. Uh, and with a big minion wave pushing in, he should be able to close that CS gap pretty quickly. But he needs to, this is what he needs to do. Prioritize on wave kill right now. It's a big wave. You can't afford to just be last hitting. You need to push, push, push. Yeah. Sit, trying to save the Peacemaker to see if he can get Levy. Oh, steals the health relic. He's going to net back, but look at that trade. It's working way better for Levy. And now the minion wave is crashing into turret. He's going to have to be very quick on the draw. Not losing any minions just yet. Nicely calculating that. Levy's actually backing in the brush, so he won't be spotted by Swiffer. It is so close in CS right now. But Swiffer's just playing the defense game. Really smart from Levy. Just getting the offensive push down, um, then backing away, using this opportunity to pick himself up another sword, and now Swiffer's only going to have an awkward back timing. Swiffer needs to put a trap on that health relic right now. Deny any chance of using it. He is going to net, and unfortunately, Levy is going to take it away, but he does trade more damage than he was able to heal, so that's definitely going to help him. Close to level 6, Ace in the Hole will be available. Believe it or not, as long as Levy doesn't miss any farm right now, he's actually still going to be ahead in the farm department, even though he went back to base. So really good back timing from Levy, and he's actually got a sword advantage. And, and Swiffer's missing farm. Yep. So things right now in Levy's control. Uh, but you can see how much harder it is becoming for Levy to actually trade with this Caitlyn as time goes by. Yeah, Swiffer steps up, a couple of minion harass. Ooh, he does get nailed with the Peacemaker. Levy on the way back, and that's level six. He's going to ace in the hole, no dodging available. This should be Levy backing off. Now, Swiffer, let's see if he can stop this and not give up any farm this time. There we go. Just force him back. You don't even actually have to do the damage. But he does take an erroneous tower shot. And Levy's going to stick around. Yeah, I feel like he has to. This is going to be good for Swiffer because now he can go back. Pick himself up some items. No, he's actually going to play hyper-aggressively. He wants to try and get some damage down onto the turret. I feel like this is a bit of a mistake because... Well, I mean, it can work out, but you're so low on mana. If Levy just decides to go for an all-in commitment, there's the potential for him to come out ahead, largely because of the item advantage that he does have. True. Gap close, though, just isn't that big enough right now for Levy, and he's got no flash Oh, this available. is big. This, this is massive. massive. Swiffer's taking away the health relic. Okay. Levy just cannot get in here, and he can start freezing this wave. So I'm not sure if Swiffer timed that or if that was just a lucky break, but now Levy is forced to go back because there is too much of a big health advantage as well as mana advantage. Now Swiffer can just start pounding down onto that tower. He's also got the CS lead, so this is going to force Levy into a decision saying, I have to go for the all-in right now, or I have to get some kind of outplay where I can force Swiffer back. Yeah, and Swiffer's actually sitting on quite a lot of gold. He could go if he wants to back and just get like a BF store just for flat damage at this point. And he uses the Peacemaker to say goodbye to the last cannon creep, leaving it to up to Levy. But that tower's close to half its health, and seven minutes in, this big farm advantage for the OPL side. Yeah, there's the BF sword, Pyra. You Hell called yeah. it. He's even able to get himself a health pot, so things looking very positive for the Oceanic mid laner. When you're 0-2 down, what do you need? Your best friend. Sword. <laughs> it's good. Swiffer's going to be able to do a lot more damage with that. However, the Vamp Scepter does mean that Levy can stick a little longer. There's still Summoner even on both sides. Obviously, it's going to be all about positioning and manipulating those health relics. Unless it goes all the way down to the farm. It's still a 7 CS advantage. 6 now as Levy's pushing forward. Net connects. The autos are Swiffer. big. Just Swiffer. keep going. Oh, he tried to get the trap, but the arm time wasn't fast enough. I'm surprised Swiffer just didn't keep committing that because in terms of the actual trade, Swiffer came miles ahead. And now He's got Levy's too. just going to be allowed to heal himself back up with the Vamp Scepter. He's going to back off and pick himself up the Health Relic. But Levy's being forced to use all of his mana. Pick up the Health Relic, man. Maybe he's decided that it's not worth it. Swiffer was hot on his heels, so he's going to be able to deny that. Pick that one up. And now Swiffer is in full control. Is he going to go for a blank Q? Oh. It's a little too late. Okay, so he's still going to be able to control this right now as he's pushing the wave instead of trying to freeze it back. Health Relic, of course, not up anymore. Swiffer's going to go for the fast clear. And he's got a pretty big CS advantage. This is, oh man, this is oh so tense for both the teams. You can see, even in the lead, no comfort for OPL right now as the wave comes crashing into tower. He might actually win by tower. I mean, he rate. could. He could just commit to it. He has a cannon minion. Levy feels he has to play in. aggressively, and now Swiffer oh, is actually net. in a really good position. Oh man, Swiffer hanging onto his net here, trying to see if he can punish Levy a little bit more, who's nomming on the biscuit. Has the Bilgewater Cutlass available for himself. Nets, autos. 
Only one spear sticking in him, a level advantage as well. This is looking great for Swiffer right now. See, I feel like Swiffer now just uses the rest of his mana to go for a push, but uh -oh, Levy wants uh -oh. the all-in. Yes, he does, and he's got the ignite. Keeps on hopping forward. There's a barrier, there's an exhaust. This might be it. No. He failed the rend fire. That uh -oh, was a big problem. Oh! Oh, are you kidding me? No way, Levy! He didn't hit the barrier! Oh, I cannot believe Levy just did that! Levy, what a god! What a play, a split second window and he nails the rend! You cannot time it! Oh my god, like...